to start things off, I'm pleased that we will be honoring Nasreen Sutude with a Doctors of Law degree honors causa. As a leading Iranian human rights lawyer and women's rights activist, she was an initiator of the One Million Signature Campaign, which was an attempt to reform family law in Iran. Her courageous work fighting for justice and for freedom under the most difficult and life-threatening conditions has been recognized with several international prizes. In 2010, Nasreen was arrested on charges of conspiracy against national security. She was imp imprisoned in solitary confinement where she remains today. It is customary in citations such as this to begin with a sentence like, Nasreen Sotudeh has devoted her life as a lawyer to human rights and to the defense of those whom no one else dares to defend. And to conclude with a gesture to the candidate, I present to you, Mr. Chancellor, Nazreen Sotudeh. <laughs> However, that custom will not be followed today. Nazreen Sotudeh, candidate for the Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, will not be present today to be presented to the Chancellor because Ms. Sotudeh is currently imprisoned, more likely than not in solitary confinement, in Iran's notorious Evin prison. There she is serving a sentence of six years, initially ten, ostensibly for the crimes of spreading propaganda and conspiring to harm state security, but actually for having the courage to defend opposition activists, politicians, and ordinary Iranian citizens who were arrested, detained, interrogated, tortured, and imprisoned in the wake of Iran's 2009 presidential election. Before 2009, she had been a persistent and effective advocate for women's rights, a defender of journalists and bloggers, and a leader in the struggle to defend the rights of Iranian children in a country that executes more minors per capita than any other jurisdiction in the world. In the words of one of Canada's former ministers of justice, Nazrin Sotudeh may, yet be an international, may not yet be an international name, but she deserves to be. She is the embodiment of the struggle for human rights in Iran and the symbol of the Iranian regime's massive domestic repression. As we are here today working toward that of making a household name, not for the reasons that are usual in our celebrity culture, but as a touchstone against injustice, even if that injustice is taking place a half a world away. Though, of course, at York, nowhere on earth is half the world away. Halfway around the world is home to some of those on stage, or home to their parents, or to their extended families. Reports of injustice anywhere hit home to some of our colleagues and companions and should do so for us all, for we are all dwellers in a very small world, so much of, of which is represented here on stage and in the audience today. In a better world, the world that those on stage must and will do so much to make, and I'm not referring to my generation, I'm referring to the ones back there, uh, I would now turn to Ms. Satudeh and present her to the Chancellor, thanking and honoring her for the struggle in which she has played so courageous a part. Sometime in the future, in the world you graduates will make, someone in my place will make that gesture. But for the moment, we'll have to make do with the following. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Nazrin Satudeh, candidate in absentia for the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Accepting the degree on behalf of Nazrin Satudeh is Dr. Abdul Karim Lahiji, a prominent human rights lawyer and president of the Paris-based International Federation of Human Rights. By the authority vested in me by the Senate of York University, 
I hereby confer on Nazarene Sosade the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa Admitote Ad Gradum. Thank you so much for being here. Now, it's my pleasure to call on uh, Dr. Lahiji to address convocation on behalf of Nasreen Sutude. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, Mr. Dean, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to take part in this magnificent ceremony as representative of my esteemed friend and colleague, Nasrin Sutude, and to read out her message written to you under extremely difficult conditions from Evin Prison in Tehran, Iran. Honorable Chancellor of York University, Honorable President, Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies, members of the Senate, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I send you my sincere greeting from Iran. I have great respect for universities as center of knowledge and wisdom. I am deeply touched and grateful for the honor bestowed upon, upon me by the prestigious York University. I would also like to express my gratitude to my compatriot professors, students, and alumni at York University who nominated me for this great honor. As you may know, I have studied in one of the Iranian universities, the law school of the university where I studied, attached great importance to the teaching of professional ethics and legal knowledge of its students. I would like to tell you first why I descended to study law and why I was involved in human rights activities. When I was young and I was preparing to choose my course of study, I was deeply idealist and eager for truth and justice. Then I concluded that I could find both ideals in law. When I think of those days now, I remember that I was ready to take every risk to arrive at the truth. Like all human beings, I gradually realized that nobody in the possession of whole truth. Nevertheless, everybody's right must be respected despite all the mistakes they may make in life in the same way that I wish my rights as a human being to be respected. Even though I do not possess the whole truth. Thus, I entered the Librarian world of law. Law speaks of 
social must and must notes. It speaks of the right of person and their duties. It speaks of crime and punishment, of the human rights to ownership, right to freedom of expression, freedom of press, of the press, equality of rights of men and women, rights of the child, so or and so forth. These noble ideas are, of course, also valued and taught from different angles in the social science and humanities disciplines. All this why quite interesting and incredible because it presented me with a clear path ahead in the field of law. Nevertheless, you are not always facing clear issues in the world of law and in the bar practice. The subject matter of the case changes shade successively and introduce doubt to the lawyer or the judge. Human rights, however, deal more easily with those changes. Religious minorities have a right to live according to their religious beliefs. The press must have the right to freedom and freedom of expression. The people have a right to have access to free and truthful information. Children have the right to enjoy their rights. Women, men, children, and old people, regardless of color, race, gender, language, ethnicity and religious belief have the right to enjoy their human rights. They have a right to immunity from illegal prosecution. They have a right to fair trial, to have access to lawyers who would continue to defend their clients without fearing persist persistent intimidation and threats. Endeavors are need to realize those rights, in particular, through refraining, fr refraining from silence, disavowal, or de denial. All three are clear features of the tyrannized the tyran na, 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 tyrannized societies. I must stress in all honesty that when I was engaged desperately in intensive work of defending my clients, what I was doing was the most natural things to do because the oath I had taken when I started to practice as a lawyer, prohibited me from keeping silent in the face of apparent injustice down to my compatriots. I was defending in individuals who had suffered an injustice before my eyes, whose fundamental right had been ignored the state power by the state power. As you may know, I am in prison now. Prison provides an opportunity from the prisoner to compilate their past and probe deeply into it. I have asked myself many times in prison, how did my life unfold as it, as it, it has? I knew that there was no escape from it, but a suffering deep inside obliged me to protest, 
to protest at the persistent violations of human rights in a society where I am my family and millions of other people whom I love live. In spite of all this law, lawyers practice, judges practice, human rights, regional legal institution, regional legal institution, human rights court, the International Criminal Court, Truth Commission, and other legal institutions and concept, and above all, truth and justice illuminate our past. We know what we want and we know how to achieve them. We are, we are taking slow and patient steps in our society to establish judicial independence and to install institutions that are essential for protecting the fundamental human rights. Once again, once again, I offer my gratitude, my gratitude and appreciation to York University, its Senate, worthy colleagues and professor, a student at Alni for their invaluable support. I wish success for all the students of York University in achieving the goal they are pursuing. I believe that our joint efforts to develop and to promote human rights in every corner of the global sh shall be fruit. With my warmest regards, nothing to the Iran Evin prison, April 23.